So Ovik suggested that we should all talk about ourselves. And I was like, wow, that's awesome, because I love to talk about myself. Um, so I sat down and kind of thought about it. And I realized I didn't actually know as much about myself as I thought. Uh, so I decided to figure out what I would share with you guys about me by going back and rereading all of my old journals. So that brings us to this presentation, what I've learned from keeping a journal for 22 years. You're probably asking yourself, 22 years, have you been keeping a journal since you were zero? And the answer is kind of yes. Uh, when I was a little kid, I had a babysitter, a nanny, who was like a third parent to me, and she kept my journal when I was too young to write it myself. So here's a page from that journal. I'd like to read this to you, some a part of it. October 22nd, 1990. I'm zero years old. 8.50 AM. You are in a great mood. Breakfast, then a long walk. Third poopsie of the day after break. <laughs> so you know, not a lot of insight into my inner thoughts here, but it's turned out to be surprisingly useful to have a record of all the times I pooped between 1990 and 1992. <laughs> um, so let's talk, about, uh, let's talk a little bit about my process. These are some journals that are not like my own. Um, basically, you know, I don't like to view keeping a journal as constricting whatsoever. So what does that mean? I don't write every day. I don't even write every month. I don't try to make it a record of everything that happened. Sometimes I lie. The bottom line is it's blank pages, and I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> so the first thing I learned, first lesson I learned, kids' lives are boring. We totally forget how dull and pointless our lives were at little, as little kids. Here's some real examples from my journal. On the left, you see a drawing of bland, bran flakes. On the right, I spent most of that entry describing the plot of the movie Dr. Doolittle 2. <laughs> so, uh, next big lesson I learned, nobody ever changes. Uh, these are real photos. Uh, people tell you they change, but they don't. It's actually kind of amazing how when you look back um, at your past and at what you were like when you were young, that or anyone, that so much of who we really were as people is like in there, even when we're really, really little kids. So let's look at some data. Uh, this chart represents the topics I wrote about in my journal in middle school. Uh, so you can see that girls uh, was the top topic, followed very closely by the anxiety that none of them would ever make out with me. Uh, then in descending order, we've got things that happened to other people, Apple products, bar mitzvahs I went to, and creative frustrations. Uh, let's look at an updated version of this chart for the college years. And as you can see, not much has changed. Um, creative frustrations got a little bigger as I became more sort of productive and artistic. Uh, you can see we've got some meta stuff with analyzation of my own thought processes. Uh, and in perhaps the only sign of maturity in my life to date, the time I spent thinking and writing about Apple products dropped significantly. <laughs> now let's look at a more real example. I'm going to read from this real journal entry. March 18th, 2002. Today I walked past the auditorium, and Lydia BC was out with some other girls. They were working on a sign language project, and she kept signing and saying, Hi, my name is Lydia, over and over to me. God, I love her. <laughs> I've tried to be more courageous, i.e. not avoid her, and say hi when I pass her in the hallway. So far, my courageous attempts have been successful. So I read this to sort of show you that, you know, it's 10 years later and a lot of things have changed, but Basically, this is pretty much still how I feel whenever I talk to a pretty girl, although luckily, I can now deal with this through alcohol. Just kidding. Uh, all right. Next lesson, writing about the bad stuff makes it better. This is uh, from when I was in middle school. I was 14, and my then-girlfriend wrote me a love letter, then changed her mind and wrote me a breakup letter, and then mailed both of them true story in the same envelope. Um, it was one of the worst things that had ever happened to me at the time, but through writing about it, I was able to take a lot of the pain away. OK, so writing about the bad stuff makes it worse, it makes it better, except sometimes it makes it worse. This is from just two years ago, or three years ago. I was 19. It's a party where I really wasn't having a good time. Below it, you can see the six pages of angry, drunken vitriol that I spewed out when I got home. Don't worry, you get a closer look on the next slide. Um, but, but in all seriousness, you know, you don't have to remember every upset thought or, or twisted, depressive mind loop. And this is one of the, the cautionary tales of keeping a journal, I think, is that sometimes we're supposed to forget stuff. You, it's not important. We should just let it go. And it can actually be, it can be negative to write it down, to really, um, to really keep that all, all there. All right, so finally, uh, another big lesson is you can't predict the future. Here are some things I thought would happen that didn't uh, in my journal. We're all really bad at predicting the future. Um, Somewhere out there, this girl who is real, Josh knows her, has no idea that her Facebook profile picture is now in a PowerPoint presentation about how I tried to make out with her that I'm telling to 40 strangers. Uh, so the last thing I really want to leave you with is that what you don't write about matters just as much. These are four real things that happened to me that I did not write about in my journal. Um, and I think this is, this is really, 
this is really the most important lesson of all. No matter how much I've gotten from writing a journal and writing about my life, living it is where you really get, get, get experience and what really matters. So if someone ever gives you the choice between going out and living your life or writing about it, you should take the first one every time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>